the movie opens up in the Latin quarters of Los Angeles. An old man named Frank Vega is traveling by bus somewhere. At one stop, two thugs get in and start tormenting the other passengers. This reminds Frank of his younger days, which were the simplest and happiest times of his life. He was the only son of small local farmers, and he had a gorgeous girlfriend named Lindsay, who he promised to marry after standing on his own feet. Following up on his promise, he enlisted in the army and was sent off to Vietnam for 10 years. There, he was wounded, so when he returns back to the US, he has to go into rehabilitation before trying to come back to his life. To his dismay, when he visited his girlfriend Lindsay, he learned that she was already married with two children. Heartbroken, he moved on with his life and tried to join the police forces, but he was rejected because of the wounds he sustained in the war. He was also unable to find another decent job, as all employers demand university degrees and experience. Left with no choice, he started selling hot dogs in the street, until a more modern hot dog van stole almost all of his customers. Afterwards, he spent most of his life in poverty. The movie cuts back to the present. The two young delinquents cause a scene in the bus and proceed to hit an old man. But Frank intervenes and beats them up. The other passengers are astonished by his gallantry, and they post his video of taking on the young thugs to social media. Overnight, Frank becomes a celebrity, and he's given the nickname Badass. People start recognizing him on the streets, and companies start selling his t-shirts. Soon, Frank and his mother are interviewed by a journalist. Now, his community and the police respect him. He befriends an officer named Marlock, who occasionally takes him on patrol with him. However, three months later, another tragedy strikes Frank when his mother passes away. After her funeral, he moves into her house and he invites Klondike Washington, a friend from the military, to live with him. While moving, the old pals stop for some drinks and reminisce about the Vietnam War. It's revealed that Klondike had once saved Frank's life. They also discuss their finances, and Klondike assures him that the best days of their lives are yet to come. Later that day, he gives Frank a pen drive, telling him that it's important for Frank to keep it in his mother's old safe. Klondike claims that the content of the drive could help them become rich. He then goes out to buy more alcohol, where he's approached by two punks, named Terence and Sebastian, who order him to hand over the flash drive. Klondike lies about not having the drive, but the goons don't believe him and they shoot him dead before running away. Frank only finds out about his friend's murder the following day, when the police call him to identify his body. The killing again serves as a reminder that it's impossible to live in the neighborhood despite Mayor Williams' promises to improve the safety of the Latin quarters. That night, Officer Marlock visits Frank's house to invite him for a patrol, but the latter declines the ride as he's devastated by his friend's death. Marlock comforts his friend and asks him to have more patience as it may take more time to nab the culprits, as currently there are more crime cases than investigators. However, later that night, Frank watches the news, which reports that 20 investigators of the police worked round the clock to solve the murder case of a white man within 24 hours in the same neighborhood. Frank gets a feeling that the police are not pursuing Klondike's death seriously because he was black. The following day, he visits the police station and accuses them of being racially biased. But Detective Shaw denies the allegations and sends him back home, after assuring him that the police are working on Klondike's murder case. However, Frank has lost all faith in the system, and he decides to take matters into his own hands. Later, he goes to investigate the crime scene where Klondike was murdered. There, he finds one strange bullet casing and a necklace with a photograph of a woman inside. Frank takes the bullet casing to a local pawn shop to find out more about it. It doesn't lead him anywhere, but the shop owner recognizes the photograph of the woman from his church. He figures that the necklace probably belongs to the woman's husband, Terence. After getting Terence's home address, Frank then rushes to his house. The woman answers the door and tells him that Terence hasn't been home for a week. Frank then returns the locket back to her and inquires about her husband's whereabouts. 
She tells him that he's probably with his friends playing basketball at the local park. Frank heads to the location, and there he meets a group of young men playing basketball and asks them about Terrence. However, the young men make fun of him and refuse to reveal anything. Annoyed, Frank takes them on by himself and beats them up. After getting their asses whooped, the guys finally speak. They claim that they don't know where Terrence is, but mention that a guy named Ronaldo might. It turns out Terrence and Ronaldo are close friends. In the next scene, Frank heads to Ronaldo's apartment and meets his roommate, who directs him to a bar across town where Ronaldo likes to hang out. The scene then cuts to a clandestine meeting between a gangster named Panther and Major Williams, the mayor of Los Angeles. It turns out Panther is the boss of Terrence and Sebastian, and he had sent the two after Klondike to retrieve the flash drive. Apparently, the flash drive contains incriminating evidence of the mayor's corruption and other vices. Mayor Williams is worried about getting exposed, as he's set to run for re-election in 90 days. He reprimands Panther for sending inexperienced goons, and threatens to take him down with him if his secrets get out. Meanwhile, Frank returns home and witnesses the couple living next door fighting out in the street. It turns out that the man beat his wife Amber, and after he leaves, Frank introduces himself and takes her and her son Martin to his house to clean up her wounds. Amber is thankful for his help, and she offers to cook for him one day. The following day, Frank visits the bar and demands to meet Ronaldo, but the bar patrons start attacking him. A lengthy fight follows, and Frank eventually finds Ronaldo. The latter attacks him, but Frank counters his moves and hangs him upside down from the balcony. He then forces him to reveal Terence's whereabouts, and finally he gets the information he wants. It turns out that Terence is living with his girlfriend Tatiana, who works at a massage parlor. When Frank returns home, one of the Panther's goons ambushes him and demands the flash drive. He is initially overpowered, but Frank eventually gains control and sends the thug packing. Frank now gets curious about the flash drive and enlists the help of his young neighbor Martin to find out the information contained inside it. After a bit of research, he gets to know that the drive contains details of a secret project to dig an oil well in the neighborhood on behalf of Major Williams. That evening, Frank goes to Tatiana's massage parlor and books an appointment with her. He tries asking her about Terence, but she refuses to divulge any information, so Frank quietly follows her home after work. He finally finds Terence in her bedroom and immediately attacks him for killing his best friend. Once the bad guy is subdued, Frank hurts him to get information about the person who ordered Klondike's murder. When Terence continues to resist opening his mouth, Frank places his hands on the sharp blades of the food waste disposer injuring him. With this, Terence finally reveals that Klondike was actually killed by Sebastian, and the hit was ordered by Panther. Frank then returns home and again overhears his neighbors quarreling. When he walks into their house, he sees Martin's father putting his hands on Amber. Frank intervenes and threatens to beat the man up if he doesn't leave her alone. The man initially takes him lightly, but Frank puts him in his place and sends him away. Once the commotion is over, Amber expresses her gratitude towards Frank and invites him over for dinner later. He accepts the invitation and goes home to groom himself. Frank puts on his best clothes and returns dressed neatly and smelling good. Following this, the two have dinner together as Martin is away at his friend's house. Frank thanks her for the food and asks her permission to keep a matchbook of hers as a memento. One thing leads to another and the two proceed to kiss. But suddenly, Martin shows up and disrupts the moment. Frank then asks the mother-son duo to spend the night at his house, promising to fix their damaged door the next day. Later, Frank hands the flash drive to his friend, Officer Marlock, before going after Panther at his hideout. Frank confronts him for killing his best friend, and the gangster reveals that Klondike used to work for him. However, one day he suddenly decided to quit and betray the organization by stealing Major Williams' important flash drive. Panther then asks Frank to hand over the flash drive, and when the latter refuses, 
He and his goons attack him and tie him up to an electrocution device. They hurt him and progressively subject him to the higher levels of shock. However, when Frank isn't phased by the shocks, Panther orders his goons to expose him to the maximum level of shock, which is usually reserved only for the likes of African bush elephants and Siberian moose. Frank yells in pain, but when he still refuses to reveal the location of the flash drive, Panther takes his wallet and finds out his address, hoping to find it in his house. The gangster then orders his henchmen to continue hurting Frank while he prepares to leave. However, just then, Frank somehow manages to free himself. He then uses Amber's matchbox to light the oil drums stored in the warehouse. This sets the entire building on fire, which causes an explosion and sends the goons flying. Following this, Frank grabs hold of Panther and starts beating him up like a madman. However, the gangster manages to fetch an antique kukuri and injure Frank before running away. Despite this, our protagonist picks himself up and chases him. Panther steals a bus and tries running away. Meanwhile, Frank borrows a bus from a good Samaritan and goes after the gangster. A long chase follows, and along the way, they destroy many other vehicles before ultimately crashing their buses. Panther then starts making his way to Frank's house, while the latter encounters the two delinquents he beat up on the bus earlier in the movie. Seeking revenge for the previous humiliation, the two punks start beating him up and try to record the whole ordeal. However, Frank eventually overpowers them and defeats them before resuming his chase. Panther finally arrives at Frank's house and finds Amber. He then demands the flash drive from her, threatening to kill her if she doesn't oblige. Fortunately, Frank arrives just in time and again saves her. The two then engage in another fight and end up in the front yard. There, Panther proceeds to attack Frank, but Amber intervenes. She grabs him from the back and stops him from moving. This gives Frank the opportunity to get up and defeat him. In the final scene, the police finally arrive and arrest the gangster, while Mayor Williams is also exposed and subsequently arrested by the police. The movie then ends with Frank, Amber, and Martin living happily ever after.